Hello Booktube. In this video, I'm going to be reviewing Black Wave, Saudi Arabia, Iran, and the 40-year rivalry that unraveled culture, religion, and collective memory in the Middle East by Kim Gattis. Um, so as the subtitle says, this is a history of the Iran-Saudi Arabian conflict since 1979. Um, to put it succinctly, I love this book. Um, I read it over this weekend or this past weekend and absolutely loved it. Um, it is at times heartbreaking, exhilarating, and ultimately hopeful. Although, I mean, tempered by the tragedies that have befallen the Middle East for the last 40 years and going on before then. <clears throat> so, Kim Gaddis begins the narrative with uh, 1979 and a little bit beforehand with um, the tensions building up uh, towards the Iranian Revolution in 1979 and also a siege of the Holy Mosque in Mecca a little later in 1979. Um, these two events um, <clears throat> inspired or yeah, forced both Iran with when um, Khomeini and his circle of clerics took over the revolution, and there was uh, Saudi Arabia retrenching with its um, uh, reliance of the clerics and exporting um, their particular uh, interpretation of Islam across the Middle East in the decades that followed, uh, gradually influencing and changing the surrounding countries with the Iran Saudi Arabia um, rivalry and internal politics in most of these countries um, Egypt, Lebanon, Syria, Pakistan, so on and so forth. It, um, so I really um, think the book is very well done. Um, the history is, uh, I guess, well researched, um, and the narrative never really anything I worry about. Um, let's see here, what else? Um, oh yeah, ultimate. I mean, so it begins with 1979, and then moves into the 80s with. Um, the Lebanese Civil War, um, the Zia dictatorship in Pakistan, um, the assassination of Sadat, and um, the gradual um, changing of Egypt's politics, becoming more, not necessarily to, I guess, more reflect um, a more puritanical interpretation of Islam. And also Zia's and Pakistan's um, uh, creeping puritanization of Pakistani society. And then kind of moving into the 90s with um, Iraq and sort of the continued sort of cultural... Uh, fighting, and then in the 2000s with um, the war on terror, and then in the 2010s with the Arab Spring and the Syrian Civil War. So, and she um, touches on each uh, part, um, culture. So, in the... Um, Early mid 20th century, um, the Middle East was a considerably vibrant place intellectually and culturally speaking. 
uh, you had Egyptian cinema, um, Um Kulthum, uh, poetry, uh, I mean, Beirut was the Paris of the Middle East, a very, very bright, vibrant culture that, to a certain extent, was trying to find its way between um, tradition and the West, and very much the post-colonial or anti-colonial uh, side of uh, Marxism. Um, the political left, uh, socialism, Marxism was a very important part of um, pre-1979 Middle Eastern intellectual culture. And the tensions obviously with um, the authorities who some were more Soviet aligned, like Egypt, others more America aligned, Saudi Arabia, and the religious sort of um, relationship where particularly those supported by um, the clerical circle around Khomeini and the um, circles around the Saudi royal family uh, <clears throat> kind of pushing for a more uh, conservative, a more reactionary interpretation of Islam or adherence to more reactionary, puritanical form of it. Um, and then religion or and then also sort of the destruction of um, older Islamic um, and Arabic cultural sites um, that have gone on. And then also history. Um, a lot of sort of the resistance to uh, the earlier pre-1979 cultural um, you know, cultural milieu sort of that had been tamped out in the 80s and 90s is sort of forgotten. And so there's a scene where, um, see, I think it should be in here. Um, during the uh, early days of the um, Arab Spring in Egypt, the, I want to say the novel is Ahmed Naji, um, makes a comment about um, hopeful for the future or something like that. This is a new moment, like a new awakening. And then uh, Eftahal Yunus, who was around for the pre-1979 cultural milieu of Egypt and the assassination of Sadat, kind of mentioning, uh, raising the point, I guess in interview or in um, sources that, uh, no, actually this is basically a, yeah, it was like, culturally it was more to the left in pre-1979 and the early 80s, and then there's this massive lurch to the right and now it's kind of slightly creeping back to the left or a more progressive society. And yeah, but it's relative that Ahmed would not have, or Najal, Naji, sorry about that, yeah, wouldn't have known about kind of what came before because of the education and a lot of pre-1979 has been repressed and stuff. So anyway, so this is a fantastic book. Um, I obviously this is a library copy and I fully intend to um, buy my own copy either hopefully next month or maybe in a few months time. But I definitely want to add this to my own collection, and I look forward to. So, with that said, I highly, highly recommend Black Wave by Kim Gattis. Um, 
Thank you, BookTube, and I will see you in a video shortly, or another video shortly.